Right, it's seven o'clock, so let's get started. I know we have lots to do. Uh, appreciate uh, continued uh, interest in uh, all things zoning. So thank you for coming. Uh, call to order uh, appointment of alternates. So who's not here today? Derek. 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 So we'll. Uh, I think it's Mike's turn. So we'll seat Mike for. Um, for, for Derek and we otherwise we have a full huh if not. we have a full commission all right uh, I did look at the minutes anyone have any substantive comments Dave? I have five or ten okay um, mostly typos but let me quickly scan them Line 74, there's a um, an and that should be an, A-N. Okay. Line 86, there's a sites that's S-I-T-E that should be C-I-T-E. Okay. Line 104, there's an approved that should be uh, did not approved. passed, should be approved. Yeah. Um, Line 143, word framework is one word. Line 346, borders is B-O-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-S, -E -E no A in it. That's all. Okay. Can you repeat the very first one you said? Let's, Let's give her the marked copy. Here, so marked Thank copy. You. Okay, so nothing of substance there. Anyone else have anything? So we'll adopt the, the minutes uh, as submitted. Uh, we have a couple of consent of, uh, items that we want to run through quickly. Uh, Hiram, you want to speak to these? Sure. The first one, Mr. Chairman, is uh, absolutely a uh, sign application for Atilio's uh, the re exact replacement sign for what was previously there. Second one is, again, a replacement sign, stop and shop. It's a replacement of a placard sign on the... Uh, the face of the existing um, front facade of that building. Uh, again, same exact size, same location, no change in regulations, no change in staff recommendation is that they're both acceptable. And they're taking out the natural food and putting in a hospital? Yes. I think a little less than that, but. <laughs> okay, uh, so these uh, seem fine. Uh, I would be looking for, uh, if, unless anybody has any objection, these will be approved. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 So on the aye. consent agenda, that's fine. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion that we amend the uh, agenda to try to deal with as much as we can so that we leave uh, time for the 155 Hot Meadow Street. Uh, so I would uh, skip over to item six. Well, let's see. Hang on a second. So we have we'll do the public hearings. How do we have to do this? Um, move to change the agenda. All right. So somebody move that we change change the agenda to match what Chairman Pomeroy wants to do. <laughs> Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, so let's take care of uh, number three on the public hearings. Uh, Mr. Marecki will uh, recuse himself. And uh, your spokesperson can uh, speak to application 14 28, 14 29. Is your spokesperson here? All right. In the meantime, Ms. In the meantime, Mr. Chairman, just let me tell you that the Planning Commission considered this application at its last meeting and recommended unanimously recommended approval for this okay. application. Okay. Mr. Korea is going to make a presentation. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for taking take, taking us early. Also, <laughs> uh, sure. It's uh, C O R R E I A. Uh, Rich Korea. Okay. Um, Ten Station Street. My business address. I'm a commercial real estate broker in town, and I've um, uh, been marketing these properties over the years. And uh, as we looked at it, and uh, trying to find a, uh, 
you know, looking for tenants to uh, come in over here. Uh, we went to the property owner and suggested that uh, we look at unifying the, uh, the zone with the rest of the street. The, the, the first two buildings are zoned uh, PO, which is professional office. The third building up, uh, Jerzax, is zoned R15. And then you get into a, a B2 district with the uh, school buses and where you get your hair cut in that area. And as, we, as, I, as I look at it, when you we go for a PO zone, that allows professional office and nothing else. So if somebody had like a business they wanted to have on the first floor and have a little apartment upstairs, they can't do that in the PO zone. Okay. Um, so, you know, I said, well, if we can't jump over somebody else's property to do this, we spoke to Jerzyk and he said, sure, go ahead, you know, as long as it doesn't cost him anything to uh, do the zone change, he'll be happy with it. It would also help unify that section of the street. Some of the times when uh, we're out looking at property and we go down West Street, it is an I-2 zone next door at the, uh, with the uh, restaurant. And then across the street you have a PO, then across the street you have an R-25 and an R-15, and you have all these different zones and a half mile stretch of road. This would give some unification uh, to West Street, and we hope that you would consider that. If you have any specific questions, we can get into that. But uh, it's really, it's really more of giving these property owners some flexibility to adjust to the market uh, as to what is rentable and what isn't rentable. Okay. All right. Okay. And is there a reason, any reason we shouldn't do this, Hiram? From you know, staff recommends it would in fact unify the zone along that stretch of road. Uh, it makes sense to us, and we explained to the planning commission the same thing, and they were in agreement with that as well. It doesn't conflict with the plan of conservation development. We recommend that it. Makes sense. Okay. All right, any questions? Are we in the public hearing of two locations? Yes. The, 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 it's, as I understand it, some of the properties are owned by Mr. Marecki, and some uh, one property he has the right of first refusal and represents them. Correct. Two separate applications because two separate owners, but the same essential. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's correct. Yep. All, right. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. We technically need to, well, let's see. So the next. So that public hearing was open. We should close it. Any comments from the public? Any, any com oh, any comments from the public? Thank you. It is a public hearing. Anyone wish to speak to properties on West Street being converted from PO to B2? Hearing none, I look for a motion right, to close the public hearing. These, these are on the north side of West these Street? These are on the south, south, side, south, south, side. south side of West south Street. Side. Between uh, the Grist Mill and Salt South Side. Yeah. So it's been moved and seconded. We close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Who moved and who seconded? I'll second it. I'm not sure. Did aye. anybody second it? You moved. I, I moved it. No, I'll second it. Second. 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 All right, great. Uh, application number 1433. Uh, Malika, boy, help me. Malika here? Yes, you did. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Please uh, use the microphone. We are being recorded. How are you? Uh, we're you good. Know? So you, can you just briefly uh, summarize what you're asking for? Yeah, I'm asking for to sell a wine and beer. I mean, permit selling wine and beer. My location in Venice. All right. Five. Say your name. My name is uh, Benny. Benny. That, that's mm -hmm. not what it says. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, <it> pronounce. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> Malika Dunbale. Bande. Okay. So, <laughs> it's pretty hard, but. Okay, so this so. is an application for a uh, permit to sell beer and wine. Special special permit required for a restaurant. Uh, staff did a report on this. You want to summarize that for us, Hiram? Correct. Uh, there, there are other, this, this building abuts actually the package store, and there are other restaurants in the area. Um, it doesn't appear to be out of character with the areas in a commercial area. Uh, there don't appear to be any other substantial concentrations of residential population in the area would be adversely affected. Thank you. Anyone, uh, any questions from the commissioners for uh, Benny? I would be opposed to it until the applicant could get some recognition of our internal get signed. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna get to that. 
Okay, that's fine. That's that's a valid comment. So there have been issues uh, with with your sign, Benny, as it relates to be, not being in compliance with the sign internally lit sign. No. Hiram. Correct. We've talked about that for a long time. Okay. We have we resolved. Have we have we done anything as an action against that? Have we asked it be <coughs> taken down or not? No, I, Mike, Mike uh, Glidden has actually been talking to him for uh, a while, and, and they don't know if any resolution of that has been. Has there been any back and forth with regard to? No, but I don't know. I, I mean, nobody told me about nothing. We have here that soon. Okay. We approved everything awesome. first time. So this is an uncomfortable situation because it, it's in the staff report on this that that there have been issues relative to this, but it doesn't sound like we've actually issued any kind of order or request or there were there were a number of variances that went back and forth uh, a couple of years ago mr chairman and, and there was unresolved the issues were unresolved you know should you decide to close the hearing tonight you may want to hold up on acting on this until we get that resolved okay. all right any other questions for benny from the commissioners anyone here to speak uh, and from the public to the application for a beer and wine license for benny's restaurant all right, seeing none, I would be looking for a motion to close the public hearing. Dave Can Ryan move? moves. I'll second. Uh, yeah, Kevin, uh, Gray seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 So the public hearing is closed. Uh, I would further, uh, continuing my uh, agenda uh, amendment, now ask that we vote on these three applications before we move back to the public hearing uh, that's open. So I'll ask Vaughn to uh, recuse himself again. Yeah. <coughs> Pay attention though, this won't take long. All right. All right, so we're gonna first consider uh, application 1428 and 1429 together. Any discussion on this? I move we approve them. Looking for a second. Second. Seconded by Jerry Post. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's moved. Uh, second, I'd uh, like to look at application 14 33, uh, Benny, uh, as it relates to the beer and wine license. Um, looking for a motion and then discussion. <coughs> motion. Move we approve his application 1433. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Now, do you want to make it pending the resolution of the outstanding zoning issues? The problem is, I don't think there are any. That's I, I don't think there is an, a request that hasn't been answered. I think there's dialogue, but I don't think that there is. Uh, that's that's the difficulty here. So, but we certainly, I certainly will tell the commission this evening that we'll talk to Mike tomorrow about that, and we'll, we'll get it. If there's any issues unresolved, I'll get them get to the bottom of them. I mean, I think it's a great idea for the guy to have a beer and wine license. I just don't like the idea that someone can get a zone change while there's still outstanding issues. Okay, well, this isn't a zone change. This is just for the... Or for this, the is a special, this is a special yeah. permit for the beer and wine. Yeah. I understand. All right. I, I don't think we should hold the guy's business hostage to the disagreement over whether a <laughs> string of lights is internally lit or, or, art. or not. Or artwork. Or art, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I think that the staff has to resolve that. Yeah, the staff has a responsibility to either make a direct request and state that it's in violation and, and ask for it to be fixed or let it go. I mean, the staff has been incompetent in this for the last two years, so, you know, I don't, I don't feel any reason to think that that would get any better. So we sit here tonight, we don't know that there is a violation that needs to be fixed. That's the problem. Right. There's a mention of it in a memo, that's all. And I think that's the problem. The problem is there hasn't been a demand for it to be removed. Has there, Hiram, do we know? No, not that I'm aware of. All right, I, I, I agree with Dave. I think we should go ahead and uh, approve this permit. You're welcome to vote however you'd like, Ned. Um, but I also will, will uh, strongly request that the uh, staff compliance officer speak to Mr. Benny and state whether the sign is in violation or not and what needs to be done or drop it and let us know that it's not an issue. 
and report back at the next meeting. Now you're, now you're aware of it, so you can get in front of our electrician, right? So <laughs> probably can act on that pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> just, just to be clear, the, the memo references the, the temporary sign ordinance, and, and that may have to do with the A-frame sign that's displayed there more frequently than, than not. So just to, I just want to be clear, that's what okay. the number is. Thank you. All right, so it's been moved and seconded. I'm concerned about the attorney lit sign, not the A-frame sign. But that's not even mentioned. But what, what is mentioned is the little sandwich board sign. If you drive down the road and the bridge is missing, I don't think you have to send a report to someone. The bridge is missing. I mean, it's an internally lit sign. It's obvious to even the casual observer. All right, I'm going to call for the vote. We have a motion and second on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. All right. Let the minutes show, though, that we want the discussion that's referenced in the memo cleared up to our, our satisfaction in the next meeting. It does not stop his uh, ability to get the permit. Fair and wide. Okay. And also, we'd like to hear the determination of whether that sign was an internally lit <coughs> legal sign or not. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> oh. I'm sorry. Uh, while we're off our agenda, thank you, guys. <coughs> thank you, welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's deal with the uh, possible action on agenda items in number six. Uh, application 1426 of 121 West Street LLC for site plan amendment on the property located at 121 West Street, Zone I-2. Mr. Chairman, this is a... Uh resolution of a long-standing uh, issue with regard to the property at um, Salters. Uh, the matter is uh, in the process of being resolved. They told the engineer that they didn't need to come this evening, but I just wanted to let you know that we received the, uh, the application. They are simply uh, repaving that uh, driveway and doing some test wells in that property right now. So that's basically what that is. There's, they'll be back at some point in the near future to resolve that. But what they were hoping to do was to get the commission's permission to go ahead along with the plans. They've been working with the DEP and environmental consultant and, to, and staff as well before Howard left uh, to try to get this resolved. So there's really nothing else other than paving the existing driveway that the commission would be looking at. This is at Salters, right? That's correct. Yeah. What does the application entail? Paving the driveway, Dave. It's a site, basically a site plan amendment. We'll so it's a site driveway. plan amendment which says that he's going to put, uh, is going to pave part of the existing. And is it materially different in, in size or no shape or anything else? No. There there was some drainage issues <laughs> with regard to a culvert that was there. Uh, they've been given permission from the conservation commission, uh, working through their environmental consultant to close that up to make sure that it doesn't increase. There was an issue, if you recall that the, the pond downstream that went into the West Street development had a, an, a, a sheen on it. Um, the, the attempt to determine where that came from was part of this whole process as well. So they're doing their best to resolve that and make sure that that doesn't continue and that it's not coming from this property. So in addition to the monitoring wells that are in, in place right now, it'll be simply paving the driveway at the same size that was previously located there. That's what they're looking for their approval for. I still don't understand why they have to come to us. They're paving the same space that they already have paved. It's currently a gravel drive. They're creating additional impervious area. If we didn't come here, that's it. That's the reason. That's my question. Yeah. Okay. 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 They're increasing the coverage. No, they they have approval to to pave the driveway the same size that it currently is. Okay. So any other questions for Iron? All right, so I'd be looking for a motion on this topic. Move we approve 1426. No, second. Seconded by Mr. Gray. All in favor say aye. All right, next up is application 1427. T.J. Donahue, Killian and Donahue uh, as agent for the Simsbury Historical Society, Inc. owner. Site plan amendment for the proposed memorial for Martin Luther King in Connecticut. Property located in uh, Hot Meadow Street. Uh, zoned SC1 and SC3, and I think Mr. Gray has to recuse himself because of his role in the Historical Society. Mr. Donahue. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, 
I represent the Simsbury Historical Society and the kids who are building the Martin Luther King in Connecticut Memorial. You have in your packet, I'm sure, the uh, minutes from the Design Review Board of June 2nd, 2014. They did a, a thorough review. We had a unanimous approval. Uh, you also have plans of the monument in your packet. The, mon the monument will be at the southwest corner of the Historical Society property adjacent to the red schoolhouse on the corner there that's going to that's now going to be moved under the plan and it's going to be constituted of a brick patio paver area a walkway in it's going to have several benches which will sit either way both facing the historical society and toward the plaques and there will be five structures which will be glass panels this high and this wide they will contain five frames of text the text will talk about Martin Luther King and his time in Simsbury. Uh, the first text will be, will state that he li stayed, lived in Simsbury for the summers of 44 and 47 and worked on tobacco with other Morehouse students. The second story will highlight some of the letters that he wrote home about how important it was uh, and, and will contain the quote, we went to church on Sunday in Simsbury and we were the only Negroes there. Negroes and whites go to the same church here. And then, uh, it was in his letters home that he also said that he emerged as a leader of his group, uh, and that being that he was the uh, the religious leader of their group, and he had to speak on text every Sunday to 107 boys. Finally, he remarked in a letter home that he had to experience segregation when he got to Washington, D.C., and had to get on the uh, car where the whites and blacks were separated to go back home to Georgia, and that made a significant uh, impact on him. This all follows from the movie that the kids did several years ago. It's a fantastic project, and uh, uh, we'll answer any questions, but we're very hopeful you'll support that and move us on. You're still moving the uh, schoolhouse back to make room for this? That's still part of the project? This, the application before you is to do that. Um, we're in discussions now with our contractor. Uh, the condition of the schoolhouse isn't as good as it could be, and it, we're either going to move it or not move it. I mean. The, the, but the the monument the memorial will be exactly the same. It just might move uh, twenty might feet. Be somewhere else. All right. Twenty feet back. How's the fundraising going? The fundraising is uh, nearly at an end. We we're uh, we we're at about uh, eighty thousand, and we need about a hundred, and we know where we're going to find the rest. All right. Well, we'd be very pleased if anybody wants to. Where's the historical society? The historical society. Yeah. The historical society is on Hot Meadow Street, across from the Methodist Church, between. Phelps Lane and uh, Andy Supermarket. Oh, oh, okay, that's it. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hysterical society. <laughs> Seriously, Ned? Some people have called it that. Okay. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Donahue? So I'd be looking for a, a motion on this. So All right, I'll move right <laughs> proof. Application 1427. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That's so great. so approved. That's cool. uh, next up, application 1435, a Christopher Millard Phase Zero Design Applicant, Mitchell Auto Group. Owner proposed uh, exist exterior renovations to Mitchell Auto Mall on the property located at 416 Hop Meadow Street. Zone B2. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Mollard from Phase Zero Design. Uh, here on behalf of Mitchell Auto Group. Um, Mitchell has been uh, approached by the uh, franchise to start renovating their building. Uh, basically, they're at risk of losing the franchise if they don't start complying with the, uh, the prototype requirements of, of uh, the Chrysler dealership and, <coughs> excuse me, and, and uh, as well as Jeep and. Uh, Dodge, which are the other vehicles that they are selling on their site. Uh, basically, our renovations to the building include adding this new uh, Millennium Tower, as, uh, as Chrysler likes to call it, and um, the existing building would stay intact. Uh, we're proposing to basically resurface or clean up the exterior fascia that's on there now, um, add some additional paints to kind of uh, to make the facial pop a little bit more because right now it's just a, a dull gray color. 
Um, the, the tower is approximately, approximately 18 feet wide, uh, three feet deep, and it stands only three feet taller than the existing parapet of the building. <coughs> In addition to these renovations, they're also looking to do uh, new signage on the building. Uh, right now, there is no signage on, on the building. As you can see. There's also a compliance uh, monument sign that sits in front of the building. So they'll be removing the non-compliant signage, putting in a new monument sign that complies with the allowable square footage. Uh, there'll be a, a brick base. The brick would match the existing building, uh, the brick that's on the existing building now. And the, the materials of the sign uh, would be an aluminum material, uh, halo lit, uh, which complies with the uh, Dodge Jeep uh, prototype. Um, there would be no, no backlit sign, of course. Uh, I brought a couple other drawings to with me just to help you kind of understand how it looks in plan. Uh, this is the existing Dodge showroom. Uh, basically, this little uh, rectangle at the front of the page, the bottom of the page, is the new monument. Uh, I'm sorry, the new Millennium Tower. Um, interiors, as long as along with this whole renovation of the exterior, they're going to be doing an interiors package as well to again kind of modernize the interior of the building. This is a site plan. Again, uh, the Dodge showroom sits over here in relationship to the rest of the, the Mitchell uh, complex. Uh, I think there's Saab in there and Volvo dealership, and then also their, their service uh, buildings. Um, Currently, there's three monument signs on site. Uh, this one, which is the one we're going to replace, the other two are planning on leaving in place as they are. We're not, we're not touching that. Uh, and like I said, the uh, the square footage of the sign we calculated to 29.2 square feet uh, for the monument sign, and the building mounted sign I believe was 27 square feet. These images here just. Uh, two-dimensional renderings of the existing building. Again, you can kind of see the repainting the existing facade and then building this new uh, brick archway. What's the lighting on the, on the sign on the, on the Excuse me? What's the lighting for the sign on the On the building, uh, there, this would be halo lit. <coughs> and then <coughs> this last page is just a uh, a blow up of the sign. Uh, basically, you can see the, the detail on the sign. Again, this brick would match the, the brick that's on the arch, which also matches the brick that's on the building now. So it, it all uh, looks like it's been built together. Um, we'd add the X. Excuse me? Where's the sign? Uh, well, there's signage on the arch. Yeah, the sign, the other one. Right out in front. Uh, in front. Where the other one was? Exactly. Yeah, they would replace it. Um, the, there would be an accent color to the brick. All the new aluminum storefront would match the building that's there now. Um, uh, and then as far as the signage, we would have a four-foot perimeter of planting around the sign, uh, some low, low uh, cover, and uh, the sign uh, height, which I remember the height, is uh, it's less than 10 feet. So I, believe, uh, I believe it's right at 10 feet. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Is that a fair review from the design review board? It did, in fact, Mr. Chairman. What they also noted was that um, the sign uh, package, that the alternative sign package that was presented was not acceptable to them, was not going to be approved by them or recommended for approval by them, and that this package was, in fact, approved by them. They wanted that the record. It was a toned down version of the standard uh, Chrysler book. Mm -hmm. right. That's correct. All right, thank you very much. Any questions or comments, discussion among the folks? I'm looking for a motion. I I'll move that we approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. And then last, uh, before we get back to uh, 155 Pop Meadow Street, is application 1436 of Thomas J. Donahue, Jr., applicant for 16 Albany Turnpike, LLC, owner for a site plan amendment for a proposed bank on a property located at 16 Albany Turnpike, Zone B-3. 
Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, thank you and thank you, audience, for allowing us to get these shorter items through. And to, for that reason, I'll be very, very brief. Mark Aragoni is here from Milo and McMoon. They're the uh, LSA and the engineers on the job. I'm going to run through it. I know that the <coughs> members of the Zoning Commission had the advantage of seeing this was presented to design review tonight, so I'll, I'll just go through it quickly and answer any questions that you want. This is the uh, old BP Arco station that in 1987 was found to be a polluted site and it's a, a dirty site that's now being adaptively reused. Three years ago, it came up for auction. Uh, uh, the Hoffman family, who's made such an investment around this, uh, bought the site because they didn't want it floating out there with, with the challenging use they could have, and they worked hard to plan and design something. What's proposed now is a 2,500 square foot, single story Berkshire bank uh, on the site. When we did our first talks with the town and with the state, they both were very uh, affirmative that they did not want new curb, the existing curb cuts to be reopened back out onto the street. And so what happened was we got in a negotiation with McDonald's and we came up with a system of easements that uh, would allow, they use our easement here to go west. This would be the sole easement in and out of the bank building so that there would be no new curb cuts onto, uh, onto uh, Route 44 or Bushy Hill Road. Uh, we have been to the Zoning Board of Appeals because McDonald's demand was that the building be situated, if they were going to make that concession, the building be situated so that their view lines would not be blocked from uh, from this lane of uh, Route 44 going west. And in fact, that's how we decided this 2,500 square foot uh, uh, building. The in th This is a uh, subdivision, this is a revision of a site plan, um, and uh, I think Mark has it. The existing site plan. This represents the existing site plan in our land records, which shows what was here before it was taken down. It was at 80 percent lot coverage, um, and it had wide open uh, pavement out into Route 44. Uh, so that's what it looked like before. <coughs> I suppose somebody could have made an argument that that's what you were entitled to build, but that's not what we did. We, we went with the other plan. Um, the it's if you briefly go through the quick highlights of the uh, sure in a minute or less. I can yeah. get people interested. As TJ mentioned, the uh, and for the record, Mark Aragoni, licensed landscape architect, state of Connecticut. Can you spell your name? A-R-I-G-O-N-I. -I. And principal with the firm of Mylone and McBroom. <coughs> As TJ mentioned, um, half an acre parcel. Access is going to come off of the existing one way in, which would be for traffic heading southbound on Bushy Hill. Um, main access, point of access at the signalized intersection there. Um, and again, no, no modifications proposed there. No modifications proposed to the out and in um, for McDonald's, which is off of 44, unsignalized, and unsignalized one way in here, very difficult corner if we all, all are very familiar with it. Um, basically, the lane is a 24 foot aisle, 20 foot aisle around the back. The drive through, um, after much consideration and discussion with McDonald's and how the building was going to be situated, the drive through um, falls on the western side of the building. It will have one drive through serviced off of the building and then one remote um, off of the middle. Uh, pier stanchion um, for the overhead support. So those are the two drive-through lanes with a pass lane um, on the outside. So if those drive-through lanes have cars in them, there's still a 10-foot to 11-foot pass lane around the outside. There are 16 parking spaces um, proposed, two handicaps. One of those handicaps is a, is a van space um, with a little bit different dimensions. The landscaping that's proposed is very minimal. Foundation, low height foundation plants um, around the building um, with the potential to do some annual planting, maybe some perennial plantings, sort of emulate what's going on outside uh, on the embankment along 44 that McDonald's has currently. Uh, and then on the plan, there is a very low height uh, stone uh, concrete details to be determined. Uh, low height wall out in front that has been discussions that that may be an entry to cemetery sign. Um, again, small little package, no circulation, no curb cuts on the bushy um, or 44, and utilizing the three points of access um, that exist out there right now. Any uh, quick question on the, the, the parking lot? So coming in off of 44, uh, not up by Hoffman, 
the, the front end of the columns. And where you pull in, mm -hmm. so you've got to go through, go cross through. over the one way coming on the right, go around. You know people are going to try to cut through. Was there any way to make that a two way going through there? Because it's not enough room. Two way going through here? Yeah. Yeah, because of the angled parking spaces that are in here, um, you would have to really expand that width. Okay. And the other thing what we don't want to do is by making that two way, you're asking for a head on collision. Yeah. Um, somebody coming in from here. You know, the flow going to McDonald's historically is, you know, you come to this point. You come to this point and you come around the corner. Um, so really you're going to come to this point and you're going to now have the choice to go left or right. Right now very few people go right. Okay. Very few, if you all know this parking lot. I mean, this is a good place to meet, meet somebody if you're going to go golfing or fishing and leave your car there for the day. But, you know, very underutilized um, in the back here. But. McDonald's didn't hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take, take me a little further. <laughs> driving through the site. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Which way do you go through the drive -ins from the Sure, right here. So say, say we come off of 44 in this access, we come through, we come around, yeah. we come into the site. If you're going to go through the drive through you're going to come around the corner and you're going to either queue up on the building window side drive through or you also have that secondary remote okay. drive through And then your exit is back out and straight out to here. Stop sign at that, at that point. Why would you want to come in and go straight in in the other direction? Why would you want to come in and straight in here? Yeah. Uh, because of queuing for the tellers. Basically, if we just put the if we put the uh, tellers right here. No, I, I, I follow the way you're doing it, but you also show lines where someone would drive in, and instead of going to the drive-in tellers, they would come straight into the site. If you're going into the, the bank, if you're going into the bank, the easiest place to park is to come in, grab one of these two spaces that's not handicapped, or if you have the handicapped sticker, park in these two spaces, or come in and park where you have an ample opportunity to park. Now, how do you get out? The, one it's way the other way. No, it's not. Two ways. Two ways. Yeah, two ways. No, you can't go around the tellers. No, you go the other way. Yeah, right. you'd come in here and you would come back out this direction. Right. Good point. Good point. Yep, this would be signed, do not enter. And you would only have that that much space. Don't forget what's not shown in plan view. It's hard to see. You're going to have that canopy covering everything but that drive-through lane, uh, the pass-through lane on the outside. So looking in plan view, it looks like it would be an easy for somebody to come around and come through that direction and get hung up behind the building. But with the canopy there and the do not enter signs and the tellers, it's going to be pretty understandable. The uh, volume of traffic is important to understand. It's the commitment to McDonald's is it will be a bank or a similar generating use and it's 2.5 uh, trips per 1,000 square feet. It's, what were your numbers on that? Uh, just for reference, McDonald's has about 2,700, 2,800 trips per day on a weekday. Uh, we are looking at, I think, 370 max out on a weekday. So it's a very small percentage of what uses those signals. Are you, are you going to be in violation of McDonald's if someone parks your truck in front of the bank and watch the movie? <laughs> uh, and you have. Uh, easements or agreements with McDonald's for any signage. I know you're not asking for signage tonight, but you're going to come back for signage, right? We're going to come back for signage to design review and to this commission for signage. Right. Any other questions? There were uh, a couple of recommendations by design review board as, as uh, to trying to vary the mix of um, is it stucco and, and uh, shingles on shingles the, the gate lines that they were in building details? That type of thing. So we would ask that you comply with that, with those suggestions. We're good with that. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? So I'd be looking for a motion on this as well. Motion to approve application 1436. Mr. Doyle moves. Second. Mr. Post seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Nice to see some people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then the last thing we want to take uh, care of is just informational that there's a modification to the uh, previously approved application 12 15 of Philip Doyle. Uh, Agent for Cobb School, Montessori Inc., owner for a site plan amendment for a gym and multi purpose space on the property. Hiram. Mr. Chairman, 
given members a copy of the plans. I think there's about a, a total of a reduction, about 100 square feet, very small, minor reduction. A little bit of a change in the external way the building looks. Um, they wanted to get started fairly soon. They didn't want to wait till September, so suggested to them that they handle this way. The change in the building was so small that I thought the commission wouldn't have a problem with it. There's really no change in the rest of the parking or anything else that was previously approved. But because the site plan amendment has to come here, it uh, seems since it's smaller instead of bigger that this is fine. So do we need to vote on this? Or yes, if you would, please. Okay. That would make the record nice and clean. So I'll make a motion that we approve the site plan amendment for the Cobb School as submitted. Someone want to second it? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Irene, pick somebody to second it. There were four again. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. And then, and then at the end of the meeting, Mr. Chairman, I had two other informational items, but I'll go through those at the end of the meeting. Okay, that'll be fine. All right. We'll, don't, don't, yeah, we'll, we'll come back. All right. So thank you very much for your patience as we did all of that. Uh, as I'm sure most everyone in the room is aware, we had uh, a substantial amount of discussion uh, two weeks ago on the application number uh, 1430 and 1431 relating to the uh, what we call the pool barn property owned by uh, Mr. Thomas Evans. Uh, that hearing was left open at the end of the meeting and so we will continue uh, to take uh, public comment. Uh, there are a few things that we would like to clear or at least get on the record uh, first before we go back to a public hearing. There were things submitted uh, from several people. So, Hiram, do you want to sure. go One through thing, that? Chairman, the uh, clarification on the Planning Commission recommendation, I think I've sent everyone the memo that the recommendation uh, on the two applications was split. Uh, both of them were negative. And you have that correspondence in your, as part of your file. That's from the Planning Commission. Uh, secondly, the question uh, was asked at the hearing uh, about the lot size and the town attorney has provided a memo which I've given everyone copies for. I think you have copies of that this evening as well. There are other letters of uh, support and letters uh, in opposition. You've been provided all those as part of your record as well. I think that's all I have since the last hearing, Mr. Chairman. All right. All right, so I would like as much as possible for this to be constructive in terms of additional people who wish to speak. Uh, I know that Attorney Smith has submitted um, a response letter. Um, I, I think it's appropriate that we get some of those points on the record uh, for the audience. Uh, and not just that you're, they're your points. Be the, I think a couple of things that were raised specifically um, at the last hearing relative to the minimum size of the lot for uh, the PAD. Um, Mr. Smith spoke to that in, in your correspondence, as did uh, Town Attorney Bob DiCrescenzo, that uh, the regulation is quite clear that a uh, non-conforming lot in the industrial zone uh, at the time of the approval of the PAD uh, code uh, was, would be a qualifying property for a PAD. So uh, the literal interpretation of that without the proviso that followed uh, gave a, a contrary opinion, but the fact of the matter is the record's very clear that uh, the property does qualify for the PAD uh, structure. Um, Mr. Smith, I'll give you some time if you'd like, but I would I really appreciate that you be brief and to the points that are um, that you feel you'd like to get on the record and then we'll take uh, any additional comments to the extent that it's new or uh, uh, point of view that's all right uh, uh, for the record Chris Smith Mr. Chairman do you want to take any final comments from the citizens and then I can just do one response as opposed to no I think I'd like to do it in the order I propose so. since you 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 you, you, you took the chance to, to submit a letter uh, after listening last week which was fine okay. uh, but, but and one other thing, I think we had to read into the record the Planning Commission's report, technically, under the statute. I think the town attorney made reference to it. I just didn't want to forget that before we yeah, close so the we, hearing tonight. You can do that later, I suppose, but I just wanted to make note of that. Yeah, we will do that. Well, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Mr. Peck. For the record, my name is Chris Smith, and I am a land use attorney and a partner at the law firm of Shipman and Goodwin out of our Hartford office. And I appear before you again 
this evening, this time with the continued public hearing from uh, July 7th on behalf of the owner applicant, Mr. Tom Evans, who is here this evening. Uh, we did bring our entire team that was here last time. Uh, in addition, we have Scott Hesketh, who is a traffic engineer and had prepared the report. And uh, Scott is available to respond to any specific questions that you have. Uh, I would like to just briefly walk through the response letter and hopefully everybody has it. I'm not going to go line by line. If you don't, I did bring, anybody who doesn't have it, I have extra copies. That's a letter from myself. It has Shipman and Goodwin letterhead at the top. I have extra copies for folks if you don't have one. And I did provide a, uh, a copy of this to Mr. Fitzgerald when I sent it into the, uh, to the commission. Just so you have it, there's some exhibits in there that are worthwhile to, to courtesy and make sure that everybody has, is aware of. So. Thank you. I've got mine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's Mr. Fitzgerald? He's not here. He's not here, no. Has everybody got this? Okay, and this is a letter that I had uh, addressed to the Zoning Commission, Town of Simsbury, care of your town planner. It's dated July 17, 2014, and has some exhibits attached to it, uh, A through D. Uh, the first item that I was just trying to address some of the issues that were raised at the last meeting to try to expedite uh, this process with the hearing. And the first item that I, I do address in the letter is the minimum track size issue. Uh, we just heard from the chair that the town attorney had weighed in. Um, and, you know, I respectfully submit, I, I agree with the town attorney, and I respectfully submit as indicated at the uh, second page that um, if you go to the second full paragraph specifically, it states that the regulations provide, quote, any lot not conforming to the minimum required lot size at the time of the adoption of this article, I, I italicize the following, shall be deemed to be legally non-conforming and shall be acceptable for or inclusion in a PAD application. Uh, I provided you with a copy of that specific regulation and that deals with eligible zones and tracts of land uh, that qualify for PAD applications. The, the regulations actually include eight different zone districts uh, the I-1, which is what this property is located in, is one of them. The I-1 is the only district that has a minimum lot size requirement uh, for a PAD. More importantly, the uh, PAD regulations were adopted according to your regulations on May 3rd, 2010. And I did provide you with Exhibit B. That's a letter from Attorney John Harvey, Jr. It's dated July 16th, 2014. Mr. Harvey represented Mr. Evans when he purchased the property, and he provides you with a letter of opinion that as of as far back as 1957, the subject property, 155 Hot Meadow, was at the same size and in the same configuration then as it is today. So clearly it was, it qualifies for the PAD. Also, I did provide you, uh, Mr. Evans provided me with a reduced copy of a map recorded on the land records here in in the town of Simsbury, stipulated, yeah, so. indicating and confirming that uh, the lot size. If you look at that lot on that map, it's in Exhibit B of the second sheet and the uh, attached to the letter. It's quite clear that it's same size, and it was in existence as of May 31, 1957. So I'm not going to spend any more time on that. I would just respectfully submit that the regulations, I think, are very clear, the plain and unambiguous language that, um, that this lot does qualify. And we did review that with, your, uh, with Mr. Peck uh, before There's, there's no argument about this, so let's... Okay, move on. Help, your, help yourself here, Number two, keep going. open yeah, space. Okay, really. uh, open space and public amenities. Uh, that was an issue that was raised uh, by Attorney Fitzgerald, and I do provide you here with, uh, it does reference in, in the PAD regulations that there be provided areas of open space and public amenities, and that there be adequate provisions for maintaining those open space areas. Uh, you have a definition of open space in your regulations. I provide you with that in the uh, second paragraph, and that calls for having portions of property maintained for recreational and conservation areas. 
Um, at the suggestion, there were a number of comments at the last meeting, and we did provide the commission with some modifications, some tweaks to the plans uh, to address those comments. And actually, we had some comments from design review, and I know specifically from the chairman uh, concerning access uh, from the Heritage Trail, which is located to the west of the property. And uh, specifically, the plans were modified by Mr. Hesketh, where, once again, we are retaining the access to and from uh, the Heritage Trail. The designated pathway from the trail to the proposed convenience store has been reconfigured, so it doesn't now loop through the parking area. It doesn't go through any parking area. So anybody coming from the Heritage Trail will be able to walk, walk directly to the convenience store without having to go through, again, any designated parking area. And that was a concern raised at the Planning Commission, Design Review, and I know from the Chair and some other members of the Commission. So that's been redesigned. We do provide for three different bike racks. Those are all situated, so nobody has to, they can park the bike there, so to speak. They can go to the convenience store. They don't have to go through the parking area. Uh, to gain access. And then finally, a shelter gazebo in this area here. And the, we heard some concerns from some folks that are involved with the, uh, with the trail and from some of the commissioners, I believe, and some of the uh, citizens. And this is provided for uh, folks that are utilizing the trail, who desire to patronize the proposed convenience store, use the public facilities within the bathroom facility, facilities within the uh, convenience store, or the shelter gazebo as a resting location, or just to get out of inclement weather uh, while they're on the, on the trail. So those revisions to the plans have been filed, and, and you do have reduced copies as Exhibit C, but that's essentially uh, the changes. There are two other minor ones, just to save time. Uh, the electric charging stations were relocated over to this area so it would be more convenient for folks as opposed to placing it in the convenience store area. There was a comment concerning uh, snow shelves. Mr. Hesketh feels that there's plenty as were proposed. There's plenty of area to, uh, to put snow. Uh, parking space was limited, eliminated over here to provide just additional storage area. Uh, we still meet the parking requirements. Um, but that was added even though we really didn't think it was it was necessary. <coughs> Number three, just make the affirmative statement that if indeed the residential component were to be eliminated, I think this was a question uh, from, from uh, the chair, and we heard this at planning, uh, that uh, to be replaced with either commercial or retail, the site as designed would be able to accommodate the requisite parking spaces. So take away, if you said, you know, we don't think residential is good, keep it all commercial retail, we can make it work, and we'll be able to meet the parking requirements. Uh, item number four in the letter on page three is the reference to uh, the Rabbi Samuels uh, with the Shabbat of the Valley. There were some questions uh, concerning, raised concerning the validity of that particular letter. So Mr. Evans went back to the rabbi and did obtain a new letter uh, that has been provided to you that's attached as Exhibit D, indicating no objection. I do have the original letter here that I would like to put into the record. It's just the original of what you have attached. I'll give that to you. Here we go. Thank you. And then the last comment in the letter is uh, number five, and that concerns the zone text amendment. We did hear comments that the zone text amendment concerning amending the distance requirement regulation uh, relative to having a separation distance of 400 feet from different uses, such as churches, which is obviously we're right next to a synagogue, uh, was too broad relative to applying on a town-wide basis. And one of the things that was suggested in the give and take during the public hearing was, well, why don't we, if you, within your discretion, you don't think that's a good idea, uh, you certainly could amend the text. You can make it more restrictive uh, by, uh, and you could adopt you could substitute the language that's proposed with what's proposed in the letter, and that is a simple sentence, quote, the aforementioned distance requirement shall not apply to a church located in an industrial zone district. And that would take care of that. It's specific. It only applies to one use, a church use, in an industrial zone. In Simsbury, not unlike other suburban towns, are experiencing 
churches coming into industrial zones, and this would provide that flexibility to this commission where a church, by virtue of a church coming in, into an industrial zone, it wouldn't be uh, penalizing uh, industrial uses such as uh, comparable to a gasoline station if you were to adopt this. You would still presumably have special exception authority and site plan authority, or as with the PAD, still authority to look at the particular use. Uh, but that, that would be one way to address that uh, with the uh, text amendment uh, modification. Quickly, six, there was a reference to traffic and uh, the, uh, from the traffic study. I'd like to note, as Mr. Hescath noted uh, during his presentation and as, as is provided for in the traffic study, that all those numbers are based on 100% of the projected ITE trips being new traffic and not coming from existing pass-by traffic on Hot Meadow. And as Mr. Hescath indicated, it's his experience over 30-some-odd years, I think he's older than me, actually, uh, that um, about 70% of the traffic that's expected in those numbers is actually going to be from existing traffic passing by on Hot Meadow. But to be conservative, it was assumed that all the, all the traffic attributed to the convenience store, the gas st station use, and the mixed use proposal would be 100% new traffic. And even with that assumption, the numbers indicate that there will be no adverse impact to a level of service uh, with the proposed uses. Uh, quick comment on economic impact. Uh, Mr. Evans did talk with the tax collector today. Apparently, I think the taxes for this property, about $7,600 a year. The tax collector looked at the proposal and estimated this, just the ballpark estimate that based on what's being proposed with the use of square footage, it would generate this use, if approved, would generate approximately $72,000 a year, which would be almost a tenfold increase, uh, never mind the, um, the additional folks that would be employed not only at the convenience store and the station, but also within the uses in the uh, barn. I, before concluding, I believe that, uh, well, I'll, I'll conclude with Dale, but in my conclusion, I respectfully submit to the commission that the proposed PAD is consistent and meets all the requirements of your PAD regulations, as was noted by the gentleman speaking on behalf of a couple of the applications that you approved earlier uh, with his own change, that uh, this is consistent with the goal of the PAD to provide flexibility for a property owner and to be responsive to the market. And you heard from Mr. Evans the last time in his efforts in trying to market this property and his desire to retain uh, the barn, but I would respectfully submit that this does satisfy the requirements and for the uh, PAD as provided by your regulations. And I would also respectfully submit that the proposed text amendments, especially with the proposed modification that we're suggesting to the Commission concerning the distance requirement, um, certainly is consistent. They both are consistent with your comprehensive plan, which are your regulations in your zone map, your plan of conservation and development that I walked you through the last time, and I'm not going to do that again, and will not result in a public, uh, I mean, an adverse impact to the public health and safety. So based on that, I would respectfully request that the Commission act favorably upon the pending applications, uh, which would also include the certificate of, app, uh, certificate of location that is referenced in the application package. I know that in closing, uh, Mr. Cutler, our architect, just had a couple of brief statements that he would like to make to the full commission concerning the pool barn and its, and its uh, restoration and adaptive reuse with the permission of the chair. If Mr. Cutler can just have a couple of minutes on that. Uh, It'll just be a couple of minutes. Give you a little bit of latitude here, quickly. No, actually, I'll, I'll save you the, the okay. trouble. Okay. Uh, since my uh, comments are not editorial in nature, then actually I have to give you another one. I'm very happy, happy to defer that and wait until the public has a chance Great. to speak. <coughs> Thank that's, you. That's what everybody's here for. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Chris, do you have another copy? The one we had was actually the first one. Which is that? The, the, your, 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 your I, I actually had it deeper in the back. Oh, oh yeah. So I had it. Uh, Oh, oh, yes, this is. I got it. I'm going to go sit down. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Smith, do you have a spare? Of the left? Yeah, I don't have any. Oh, okay. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. I appreciate it, especially uh, getting uh, for the 
public and for the commission those changes that were made from two weeks ago as it relates to moving the path and a uh, couple of other things that were made. I want to be sure we got that on the record. Anyone else wish to speak to this? Please come up, state your name and address. <coughs> Alan Needham, uh, two basswood. Hang on, one, Alan, just one second. At the last meeting, the town attorney made a comment to me about Mr. Needham being a planning commission chairman and testifying against the application, the accused from the application of the planning commission. I just want to bring that to everyone's attention. The town attorney last time made that point to me. So I just want to make, make you aware of that. I'm not sure what the point is. I recuse myself of planning. You're, you're not allowed to testify in front of another commission on an application that you recuse yourself from. Uh, you know, you do what you want to do, but I'm just suggesting to you that's what you're trying to train for the last time. The, the only reason I did this is that when I took my training, I, I remembered that I was allowed. I'm uh, willing to listen to the town attorney. Can I distribute a letter then? It's, it, it's testimony in the record. I think. All right, it's Joanna, would you hand out this letter to the commission, please? Yeah. Huh? Just, just to be clear, too, I, I don't make the point of being negative towards Mr. Needham or anyone just, else, or anyone else, either pro or con. But I just think, you know, having had that conversation with the town attorney, if I didn't bring it up, I don't want somebody to say I didn't say it. Thank you, uh, Attorney Fitzgerald injured his back rather badly today and is unable to attend. So this is a letter from him to this the This is a letter from him that <coughs> I would hope that you take it was a minute delivered to by. Read. Would you give your name, Joanna? Give your. I need a letter, Joanna. Needham. Excuse me. Is there an extra copy I provided, Mr. Fitzgerald? Oh, really? Does anybody have one? Um, here. Since, yeah, I didn't get one from him. Well, that's okay. That's more important. You have it, Alan. I'm going to read it. Yeah, yeah. Please. Um, any, any one of any, us would be glad to read it. I'll read it. Thanks, okay. Sean. Yeah. Well, I don't have any time. I would not violate the rules knowingly. We should. You know, we should know that's true. We appreciate that. Sure. So, um, my name is John Walker, 88 Blue Ridge Drive, Simsbury. Please wait, John. Walker, L U C K E R. L U C K E R. 88 Blue Ridge Drive, Simsbury. Okay, I wrote this myself. Uh, for a very long time, it, it has been land use policy not to allow gas stations within 400 feet of houses of worship. Now you are being asked to change that for an application that is obviously unpopular. Simsbury and many other towns have understood that gas stations do not belong near sensitive areas but you are being asked to customize the regulations to change all that for the sake of one applicant. The problem here is the gas station, not the development of this property. There are two instances where gas stations are a distance from mainstream churches and two where sensitive uses have been added a considerable distance from an existing gas station. None of these are abutting a gas station as is being asked here. I would like to note for the record that we object to the hearings for the text amendment and the zone change being heard at the same meeting. In the past, text amendment, in, in the past, the text amendment would have been cleared up first. You have several reasons to deny this. Cautionary letters from Attorney Ritson from across the street, a letter from a concerned congregant at the synagogue, a letter from First Church objecting to the text amendment, a cautionary letter from the Farmington Valley Watershed Association, and a report for, from the Conservation Commission stating that it is not an ideal location for a gas station. <coughs> You also have a rather extraordinary amount of public concern, as indicated by the petition signatures and the number of people who attended the hearing. I ask that you be consistent with the past zoning commissions and deny these applications. In addition, a few additional comments I'd like to make. First of all, I would make note that it is rather ironic that the, the little loophole that was discovered um, this past week about lot size re with regards to the PAD basically renders the entire language around lot size meaningless. That for a particular I zone, everything is grandfathered because I, I don't recall us designating new I zones recently. So that basically means every I zone in town is grandfathered and therefore we can have a PAD virtually anywhere. Um, I'd also make note that, and this is something that I've spoken to this commission about before, almost all the time, all you hear are exceptions or zone changes lately. I haven't, I haven't heard hardly anything. In fact, all five of the agenda items for public hearing today 
are zone changes or special exceptions. And I guess I'm wondering at what point will we as a town begin to think about our zones that we have as something that people need to live by and, and, and not offset the impact that these zone changes or special acceptance have to neighbors. Um, people buy property with designated zones and people make business decisions as well as personal decisions about where they live based on zones. Seems wholly unfair to me that anybody can just come in here and change a zone anytime they want and lately it seems like that's been, uh, that's been the norm. Um, I also wanted to just make a comment about the, um, the rabbi um, at the synagogue who wrote this letter. First of all, I would make note that the rabbi is only one officer of the synagogue. The letter did not state that his letter reflected the position of the board of directors of the corporation that actually owns that property. That property is actually owned, as I recall, by um, Shabbat of the Valley, Inc. It might be the name of something like that. Um, it has a board of directors. I looked on the Concord system at the St Secretary of State website. The rabbi is but one member of the board and not the entire member. And in fact, you can see the board on the left side of the letter. Um, and and, and as, as I said earlier, while the rabbi may be okay with the gas station at that site, he certainly should not be allowed to speak for every other site in town where someone may want to build a gas station next to a church or synagogue. So I think uh, from my perspective, the text amendment uh, is wholly unacceptable. Um, last point, and then I'll sit down. I think it's important with this application and all future applications that the Zoning Commission consider the ramifications of the extremely inarticulate, nonspecific, non-objective, and non-metric-oriented PAD regulation that we have in place today. This was something that was raised um, during the entire PAD drafting process by a number of people, myself included. There was actually a dissenting memo that was sent to the Zoning Commission by a number of people on the PAD subcommittee about warning that this type of a thing was going to happen where, there, where it was very difficult for you all to measure and understand um, how the PAD applies in different zones. Um, so, you know, as, as they say, there are ramifications to votes, and in this case, we, we risk reaping what we sow. So I would really recommend that perhaps in the future the Zoning Commission look at um, perhaps changing the PAD to be more specific. Thank you. Thank you. All I've got is the same thing. Tim's letter. Tim's letter. I don't have Tim's letter. I'll read it now if you want. I guess I'm going to read attorney, the attorney, uh, attorney's letter. What's his name? Um, his name is uh, Timothy Fitzgerald from the law firm of Dwyer, Sheridan, and Fitzgerald. I'm going to give you a copy of this one. Now. <coughs> Dear Commission members, at the July 7, 2014 public hearing on the above applications, I submitted a letter on behalf of several neighbors and then reviewed their objections to the development proposal. Several neighbors also offered their individual comments about the proposal. The response letter submitted by the applicant's attorney does not overcome these objections. Number one, text amendment. The applicant encourages this commission to solve the regulation obstacle to this proposal by a form of spot zoning. Rewriting the existing regulation in such a way that it creates a custom tailored exception to his needs that affects, if not only his parcel, then only a very few parcels. This is pure gimmickry. The PAD zoning should not be used as a tool to dilute or even eliminate basic underlying zoning regulations, which promote the general welfare of the town. If such a maneuver is allowed, it is no stretch to think that future applicants will use the overly flexible PAD mechanism and customized text amendments and this specific precedent to advance their maximum development scheme strong opposition notwithstanding. Number two, lot size. Following the public <coughs> hearing, the town planner identified an exception to the minimum lot size requirement in the PED regulations. It does seem to authorize the submission of a PED application for an underlying industrial zone, which is less than the minimum 10 acres, if this non-conforming lot existed when the PED regulations were adopted in 2010. It seems to have been a curious exercise to even mention minimum lot sizes in the PED regulations when in fact it would appear that almost every single lot in the town of Simsbury is eligible for a PED zone change. A PED is a floating zone. While floating zones are authorized by statute, 
The danger is that the nebulous standards and great flexibility turn it into a form of spot zoning. As one highly regarded zoning commentator put it, while the floating zone has been approved in numerous court decisions and is superficially impressive to zoning commissioners who want to zone land on a case-by-case -case basis, the floating zone does have its drawbacks. It can result in individual preferences and respond to development pressures rather than considering the best area for location of particular uses. It is contrary to the zoning goal of stabilization of property values and consistency with surrounding land uses. If a parcel proposed to be used for a floating zone is sufficiently large, it may overcome arguments that it is spot zoning or not in accordance with a comprehensive plan under by section 8-2. The uncertainty of a floating zone springing up in an undesirable location and real or imaginary fears of favoritism by the Zoning Commission has also dampened enthusiasm for the floating zone concept. This is, this is uh, quoted from Connecticut Land Use Law and Practice by Robert Fuller, Section 3A. This parcel is not sufficiently large. The size of a parcel does matter especially where the proposal for intense mixed uses is dominated by perhaps one of the most intense and automotive-centered uses there are, an eight-pump gasoline station and a, and a large convenience store. On top of that is a large retail component whose specific characteristics are currently unknown, and for housing slash work studio units. In addition, 71 required parking spaces based on a generous allocation of space to storage all compacted into 1.87 acres. Number four, the planning goals of the PAD. This proposal represents an abuse of the PAD concept and threatens the integrity of the PAD concept. As a floating zone, a PAD is essentially a separate zoning district. It involves a trade-off in exchange for allowing greater flexibility and relaxing certain non-essential zoning regulations. A developer can promote important planning goals whether they be form-based designed, whether be form-based designed, attracting certain uses that address important public needs, and preserving a substantial amount of open space. This PAD is for a large gas station and convenience store. Every town needs and wants some gas stations and convenience stores. But the public hearing established that Simsbury, but the public hearing established that Simsbury is well served already by existing gas stations, and those new ones already approved. The other components of this mixed-use PAD, unspecified retail and the four housing work studio units, are at best very dubious. This housing does not address any identified need, is incompatible with other in intents and uses, and is not especially attractive or functional. The gener generic retail store does not offer any significant economic gains. This commission must make a judgment. Can a developer utilize a customized text amendment and the PAD label simply because he wants maximum economic return on his development. The applicant reminded the commission at the last public hearing that he invested $100,000 in the permit process. Maybe an exaggeration, maybe not. The amount a developer spends on approval should have absolutely no bearing on the merits of the proposal. The applicant himself would likely concede this point in the, abstra in the abstract. It was mentioned only to create sympathy for his desire to maximize his economic return. If that is a proper motive that guides zoning regulations and zone changes, there would be little point in having zoning regulations at all. Very truly, Timothy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask a question about that letter? Is the author of Sims Ferry resident? I don't know. No. If, if not the he's an attorney he's represented by he's a rep resident. representing just us. like Mr. Smith is an attorney for he's not a right. resident either. Are the represented parties identified for the record? Yeah. Yes. 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 This whole group back here. Yeah. By name and address is how it's supposed to be done. We'd be happy to. Okay. All right. Let's yeah, let's. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I'm out. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. We can do that. We can do that. This, this is not a free for all question was raised would you please come to the stand and give your name sure. and, and ask the question for the record uh, good evening I'm Kevin Crimmins 5 Wynwood Road uh, before I ask my question I'll disclose I'm a member of the Simsbury Economic Development Task Force as well as the Simsbury Board of Ethics uh, past vice chairman of the uh, Simsbury Economic Development Commission speaking of my pre uh, personal capacity you have a right uh, 
the question is whether the author of the letter that we just heard is a Simsbury resident. If not, if the uh, represented parties would be uh, identified for the record by name and address, just as I've done. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Name is Ferb Jansen, 3 Fox Dam Road, West Sunsbury. I am on the Land Use Commission. I'm speaking as an individual. I have not uh, taken a vote on anything on this issue, although I have seen uh, the presentation twice. I am, uh, attend most, if not all, of the Economic Development Commission meetings, and I think this is a perfect fit for what they are trying to do and for the town of Simsbury. Um, it's been improved environmentally. We're restoring a historic building. We're, I heard tonight, increasing the taxes tenfold. I'm a big advocate of the bike path, rest, restrooms, shelter, bike racks. The um, plan of conservation development stresses doing something in the south part of town. Um, Exceptions, I do a lot of business with West Hartford. West Hartford would not be what it was today if it wasn't for exceptions. You did exceptions tonight. Exceptions are, are brought about by changes in market and by the taste of the public. And if we didn't have exceptions, we'd probably still be making, uh, have buggy, buggy whips and, we, and nothing would change. But I think we need exceptions in order to go forward and to be competitive with the other towns. So. Um, the other issue that bothers me as an individual is the most successful parish in this town is a, uh, a little a six-year-old's baseball throw from an existing gas station. It's been there forever. So a lot of these issues are brought up or to, you know, I know that people say we don't need another gas station. In my business, I hear it all the time. We don't need another restaurant. We don't need another restaurant. Well, look what's happened uh, when I first came to this area. There was a Howard Johnson's on Route 44, and people probably say we don't need another restaurant, but look what we've got in that town and this. So I think it's a solid proposal, professionally done. I'm not worried about the environment, and I think it's going to be good for the town in the long run, So, uh, and what, whatever's going to happen across the street. So thank you very much. Be bright, be brief, be gone. <laughs> Um, Susan Van Cleef, 3D Tungsis Place, Terrafil. Oh, Van Cleef, capital V as in Victor, A N space, capital K L E E F. And what's your name? 3D Tungsis Place. And I do serve on the clown, town's clean energy task force, but we will not be making any votes about this. So this is all my personal ideas. And I did submit a letter, but I have a few more things to say. I was not able to be at the July 7th meeting. And um, basically um, what I did was I did have some time to read the PAD between July 7th and now, and I just want to express it does piggyback on some of the comments that are made, so I'll be brief, that I do not think this plan at all in any way is um, it's very removed from the intent of the, PD, P, uh, the PAD, which I think is very subjective to begin with, but I just don't see how this fits into the PAD. A few points would be the PAD says that it encourages proposals of mixed use and other attractive, innovative developments in certain non-residential zones. And I don't see what is innovative or attractive about a Cumberland Farms. And again, I know that's subjective, but there are Cumberland Farms everywhere. What's new? And again, it is another gas station, and we don't need one. Restaurants can be unique. This is just a gas station with a convenience store. There's nothing unique about it. Um, it also says that um, the master planning of sites to create attractive, liver livable, environmentally wholesome, and pedestrian-friendly public spaces. Okay, that's what the intent of the PAD is, appropriate to their surroundings. And so I don't understand how Cumberland Farms on a hot meadow street with exhaust fumes, gasoline odors, noise, light pollution, is it all attractive, envir environmentally wholesome, or even pedestrian friendly, even with the bike path? People walk on the bike path, but pedestrian friendly usually means people are going to use that space as a pedestrian. So I don't see that at all. Um, it also says that it shall include areas of open space and public amenities in a design form, location and area to be approved 
by the Zoning Commission. Um, in terms of open space, again, um, I have not, you know, based on the fact that um, the attorney for the proposal did say there was open space here. As a member of many environmental organizations, as a science person, I'm a science educator, I have worked on open space issues as a, in the science capacity. There is no open space here. Open space usually is something that allows for natural resources such as animals, plants, water to actually exist in a way that they can survive. All right, and yes, it is for people to use also to enjoy those things, but there's nothing within this plan that's open space. Um, and I also think that in terms of the bike path, I ride the bike path a lot, and I just don't think people come here to see Cumberland Farms. People ride on that bike path to get away from things like Cumberland Farms. So that's another one of the things, um, a point I would like to make. Um, and then I think all the other points probably that I have written here have been made. Um, so I don't think that I will spend any more of your time. But thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is uh, Ben Heffern. I live at 21 North Field Road. Can you spell your last name? Uh, it's H E double -F, F E R O N. Uh, I'd like to e echo my neighbor's sentiment there. Uh, I oppose the idea of the gas station. Um, if, I, if you'll indulge me, I'll give you a quick background of where I'm coming from. Uh, my wife and I are from upstate New York. Uh, our careers took us to New Jersey for a few years, and when our second child was born, we were looking for a place to settle down, and we drove all over New England. Um, and I mean, I had job offers up by Boston, up on uh, near Rockport, uh, Portsmouth, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and we chose Simsbury out of everywhere else. We drove all over the place, and we thought this is the place that we want to be. Um, and to give, you, to give you an idea of how badly I wanted it to be here, uh, I took. A, not only a lateral move, but I took a pay cut just to take my family here. So, um, why? What, what was attractive to us about Simsbury? Uh, you know, respect for history, uh, just a general feeling of constraint, you know, just a, a nice place to be. So, I feel like this is inconsistent with the character of the town. Um, I work for Chubb Insurance, which is very close to the proposed area there, and I can tell you it's a nightmare in the morning getting to work uh, already. The, people that want to turn left out of Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, so having this right across from that is, is not going to help that situation. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gedalia. I'll spell that. No one can spell it, so I will. <laughs> G-E-D-A-L-Y-A-H. Y-A-H, the last name is Jeremias. No one could spell that either. It's J-E-R-E-M-I-A-S. And I live at 1 Hamilton Lane, right around the corner. Uh, I believe a couple weeks ago, um, as I was unavailable to attend the meeting because I was traveling, someone read a statement on my behalf, and I'd like to add a couple points to that statement. Um, as Rabbi Samuels is a rabbi, I too am a rabbi. I'm not the rabbi of Chabad. Uh, next door to the proposed site, but I am a rabbi as well. Um, my wife and I and our five children, ages, let me see if I get this right or else when I go home it's on record and I'll be in trouble. Uh, 17, 15, 12, 5, and 3. Uh, moved to Simsbury to Weetog because we wanted a nice quiet place to live. Uh, we moved from Waterbury, Connecticut, which was not quiet at all. Uh, we are also Sabbath observers, and we only walk to synagogue. We don't drive in a car, we don't take a bicycle, we only walk. Uh, unlike Rabbi Samuels, who lives on the Latimer Lane side, he's able to take the walking trail straight from Latimer Lane to the backyard of Chabad. We can't. Uh, we have to walk down Hamilton, Quad Hill, make a left onto Hot Meadow, and then walk, the, walk Hot Meadow until we get to Chabad, or a little before Chabad, we're able to uh, hop on that trail and walk to Chabad. It has become increasingly more dangerous to do so. 
with Dunkin' Donuts there. And I am afraid that walking um, with our five children uh, will be very, very dangerous to walk along Hot Meadow. As I said, we don't have the ability to drive in a car. And therefore, walking every Saturday morning and Friday nights and Friday night coming home and Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and Saturday night for the evening service when we go, and we go quite often, we're regular attendees, uh, will be very, very dangerous for us. The second thing I'd like to point out is that we have to understand the difference between um, let's say, an opinion of Rabbi Samuels of Chabad, who Rabbi Samuels happens to be a wonderful person and a very uh, a very big scholar. Rabbi Samuels would like to grow his institution. And in doing that, he would like to have the exposure. The more people um, that will see Chabad, the more chance he has that uh, people will join Chabad. He would be happy if a target grew across the street. Uh, unlike Rabbi Samuels, and with all due respect to the good rabbi, who I am very close friends with, we don't represent that view. We moved to Simsbury, to Weetag, for quiet, for peace and quiet. We would like to be able to go to Chabad and concentrate on our, sto on our studies, on our Torah studies. We would like to concentrate on our spiritual experience with our Maker, with the Lord, without the smell of gasoline, without the loud comedy channel 24 hours a day, without the people coming in and going, without the sale of beer and lottery tickets, plus a lot more. And therefore, uh, we oppose this project. And I'd like to thank you for uh, hearing me out. All right, anyone else? My name is Mike Downs. 72 Simsbury Manor Drive. And that's Weetog. <clears throat> I've lived at that address since 1982, so, you know, the whole area is pretty familiar with me. The pool barn, um, would I like to see something develop there? Yeah, as, at, at that building, yes. As far as the gas station, no. I mean, a show of hands, has anybody ever searched for fuel in this town? Anybody? Or you have a hard time finding fuel? Or snacks? Because they're all available everywhere. Um, there's going to be another component as far as they just talked about moving the access from the walk path. That site is also going to end up being a cut through to Dunkin' Donuts from the walk path. Um, as far as a liability for the town, and the walk path. I don't know where that begins or where it ends. Um, and Dunkin' Donuts, in the long term, if they're going to honor that commitment to the public restrooms, et cetera, because of liability. Because on the end of the building here, I'm assuming that's a wheelchair ramp, there's going to be a no skateboarding sign there. There will be a no skateboarding sign, assuming zoning would let it be put there, um, for a good reason. Because it's a lot. So that's, that's a contradiction of walk path access to the site because they're going to have no choice but to put it there. I don't know what Cumberland Farms policy is on, you know, basically letting the town have access to their property. I know it's a public place for fuel, but I'm not so sure in the long term after the first lawsuit, because let's face it, there will be one. I do live downstream from a potential fuel spill. Um, it was mentioned that it was a state-of-the-art system that wasn't available five years ago. Five years from now, there'll be a system that wasn't available today that will make that system obsolete. Because, you know, any recall for anything is, is just, it, it happens. But I'm just, it's not a good fit for the town. A good fit would be use of the building, not a gas station. Again, I'm not arguing the fact that that building, you know, something nice could be there. Nobody knows what's going to be there. Um, you do know what's next door, and what's next door, it's just not needed. I would 
hope you would recommend against it. My name is Barry Ramey, R-A-H-M as in Mary, Y. You got it. Good. And uh, 135 Old Canal Way in Weetog. <clears throat> uh, hi, I probably don't have too many original points to add that haven't been uh, said here. Um, I, I really feel for Mr. Evans uh, if he was looking for sympathy, he got it from me. And I hate to speak out against business. I'm a longtime Simsbury resident. I've lived here since 1980, except for a brief uh, hiatus when I lived in East Granby. We lived in East Granby for about four years. And we moved back here because we love the town. Um, north of Simsbury, and I believe it's in Westfield, uh, directly on Route 10, there is a Cumberland Farms that looks very much like uh, what we saw two weeks ago. And the description and the elevations, you know, make it look somewhat uh, pleasant. Uh, patio with umbrellas. But when you actually look at it, it's very plastic, it's very inauthentic. Um, I know you have to work within the law, and I know this is about zoning, and uh, it's not an emotional issue. But for, for many of us, it is. And this does not seem to be within the character of the town at all. Um, again, I commend Mr. Evans for trying to save that building. It's a great old building. Um, but it, it's difficult for me to see how we can reconcile aesthetically that beautiful old turn of the century building with uh, a very uh, cookie cutter Cumberland Farms. Um, the gas station part alone uh, with the covered uh, shelter is so high, the scale is so inappropriate for, for Hot Meadow Street in that area. Uh, so, um, thank you very much for allowing me to say that. Thank you. So, we're, yeah, we'll take one more because I think we're getting down to pretty much everybody's had a chance. My name is Judy Rabinowitz. That's R-A-B-I-N-O-W-I-T-Z, 126 Hot Meadow Street. Um, I, I won't beat to death things that have already been said. Uh, as a close neighbor of the proposed site, I would like to say that I am in favor of some development, however, not a gas station. And the point that I want to make is we as a town, you as a commission, are being asked to make an exception, to make changes to wording, to change the zoning. And if we as a town and you as a commission are being asked to make these concessions, I would like to point out that it should be for something that the town, the neighborhood, the populace needs and wants. This, in my view, does not qualify, so I ask you to not make the requested changes. Thank you very much. I have a very correction to make to something somebody said. <laughs> If it's a correction to something you said, that's fine. But if it's just something somebody else said. Well, with public hearings, aren't we allowed to loop back to anybody else? Says Please. Go it's ahead. very brief. I just wanted Please to come to the microphone. Sure. Because we are being recorded. I just wanted to comment on Mr. Jansen's, uh, John Walker, 88 Williams Drive. Mr. Jansen made a comment that, um, that this proposal is consistent with the POCD. And I just want to say for the record that it was noted by the Planning Commission in a negative referral that this was not consistent with the POCD. So I would think that Mr. Jansen, who is one of the authors of the POCD, would, would recognize that. Thank you. All right, so it's, uh, I think we've, we have given everyone a chance. Going once, going twice, gone. Uh, uh, I think we've had a lot of very good discussion about this. We do need to read into the record, Hiram, um, the planning things. In the state earlier, Mr. Chairman, the uh, planning commission minutes from June 24th, which you have been sent, uh, have been supplied to the commission. The commission has reviewed, uh, the planning commission has reviewed the referral material and voted as follows. 
Number one, regarding the zoning application for a site plan amendment and zone change. On a motion to provide a positive referral, the vote was two in favor and two, in po and two opposed. The referral on this aspect is therefore negative. Number two, regarding the zoning application for the two proposed revisions to the zoning text. On a motion to provide a negative referral, the vote was four in favor of the motion. Referral on this aspect of the matter is therefore negative. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do we close the hearing then have discussion? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Smith, I, I, I'm not sure what you are hoping to add at this point, but... Well, we're not going to get into the... Uh, for the record, Mr. Chairman, Chris Smith and uh, members of the Commission. Uh, there were some recommendations from uh, Mr. Mr. Peck concerning an entrance and an uh, egress and ingress to the site, and I just would like Mr. Hesketh, Mr. Scott Hesketh, to put his recommendation to come in on one of the entrances and not on the other. And, and actually, a comment, I, I suppose I can make it, and Scott, if I don't do a good enough job, feel free to step up. Uh, but the problem with that is that um, this really should remain a two-way if the commission were to approve the application, just because people that are utilizing this building, so that way they don't have to cross through to get over to this side to leave, for example. So having the two-way two -way here uh, would be conducive to you know not creating a, a safety issue by forcing folks to have to go through the entire site to get to the other side. That was the only comment, um, Mr. Chairman. I know that Mr. Cutler had some comment. He just wanted to make a brief comment. I don't know if he still wants to do that, but I, I am through, and thank you very much, and on behalf of the applicant, thank you. Mr. Smith, in the last yes, meeting you said that you couldn't get anyone here from Cumberland Farms because they had conflicts. Are they here tonight? We do have a representative from Cumberland Farms thank here this evening, Mr. Paul Wilson. For the record, I'm Bill Cutler, partner in Kenyon and Cutler, uh, architects in Avon, Connecticut. Uh, as you may remember, uh, our responsibility was the adaptive reuse of the uh, building we all refer to as the pool barn. Um, it, uh, one of the things in my brief presentation that I kind of realized on reflection is that um, I didn't really express the uniqueness of the opportunity that this application presents. Uh, we have a building. Um, it's over 100 years old. Um, it's in surprisingly uh, good condition uh, for its age, and that's attributable to a couple of different things. Um, the first of which is uh, it's a building that hasn't been used very hard, <laughs> other than the fact that it was a tobacco warehouse, or its, uh, it, uh, which was its uh, initial use. Uh, since that time, it's been occupied by a number of businesses <clears throat> none of which sought to modify, uh, renovate, improve uh, the existing structures. So it exists pretty much uh, the way it was built in 1911. Uh, kind of as I, as I mentioned in my presentation, it's a very, very sound structure, um, uh, not only because of its uh, former occupancy, but because uh, the owners that, have, that, have, uh, that own it over the years have been conscious of keeping the exterior envelope of the building intact. Uh, one of the things that we rarely face uh, in the renovation of a 100-year-old building is one that doesn't have a lot of structural deficiencies. Uh, this is certainly uh, one of those types of buildings. It is a building that is historically significant in Simsbury in terms of the agricultural uh, history of Simsbury, uh, that particularly the tobacco industry. I'm not sure that Martin Luther King worked here, but uh, it's entirely possible that he did visit this building. Uh, but, it, but it is a significant building historically. Uh, this is kind of a unique opportunity to preserve that history. Um, it's unfortunate that it's a building that uh, whose uh, renovation, you know, can't really be supported uh, by a standalone type project. It's something that needs to be paired with some other income-producing property. That's the situation that we have here. And that's just a, a you know comment that uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll you'll think about in your deliberations of this application. It is a very unique opportunity uh, for the town. Thank you. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to I move that we move. close the uh, public hearing. Second. Can we still ask questions after we close? Yes. It? Of the of the. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, not, not of the applicant. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Right. In that case, right. I'd like to ask the Cumberland Farms representative 
what we're talking about here as far as hours of operation and For the record, Paul Wilson from Cumberland Farms. Uh, with every Cumberland Farms, we, we do propose 24 hours uh, uh, operation, seven days a week. Um, but we are always willing to work with the community and come up with the hours that, that best suit both our needs and, and the community's needs. The plan now is a 24 hour operation. We do that with all of our locations initially, yes. <clears throat> That's your question? Yeah. Any other questions from the commissioners to the applicant? Any, any more proposed activity for the barn other than just kind of the ideas that you've laid out for us? Well, we think we're going to have a potential retail operation we'd like to do the apartments but any bites anything that you can share with us that might go in there it would be um, smaller it would be geared to smaller you know eight uh, divided up into 800 square foot units uh, as you see in Dale's plan mm -hmm. and it would be smaller I, there's a need in town, as you saw with uh, Rich Career when he was talking about the, the diversity of getting that zone change. You, you approved it. It's there's a need for smaller retail affordable spaces, and that's really what I'd like to do is is turn that into you know eight smaller uh, business spaces. Uh, I, I talked to uh, various uh, local, well-established. Um, uh, <clears throat> people who own office buildings uh, in, in the person who owns uh, uh, 245 hot metal the, 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 he owns uh, uh, Avon South uh, and uh, he was saying that he thought that that even the work the work the live workspaces he said he got somebody who already that would would love to do that somebody who's got a place at the shore who's downsizing and would love to keep a presence and keep an office in town and uh, an affordable office uh, live space um, so I think it'll work. I'm willing to I'm willing to build it and make it work, you know, uh, and uh, whatever that takes uh, cost wise. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Ryan, seconded by or Mr. Gray, seconded by Mr. Gray uh, to close the public hearing. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so the public hearing is closed. We are now, we can then have a discussion regarding the application and decide whether we want to vote on this tonight or postpone it until we meet again. What are We have statutory issues time-wise? 65 days from tonight, Mr. Chair. Which is when? October. Okay. End of September. You'd have your September meeting. Our September meeting. So if we decided not to make a decision tonight. I'm on. Oh, what? My comment. We can. Yeah. I'm. Just, I'm on the fence. Yeah. I could. If you asked me to make a decision tonight, I couldn't. I'd be forced to. Then I would. But. Uh, well, I think it's important uh, that we talk about it. Yeah, fine, though. I mean, uh, I'm on the fence. I mean, I'm a small business owner in town. Uh, I own two commercial properties and I own my own business. Uh, and I know how hard it is to utilize properties that you own. And he's had this property for a long time. And you all live there. It's the biggest eyesore at your end of town. And when you bought there, you knew you were buying in an industrial zoned region, too. So a little bit of buyer beware here. But I also understand not wanting to have a gas station in your backyard too so i i'm 50 I'm 50 I mean, if i lived there i probably wouldn't want it either um but as a business owner i'd be pushing for it just as well so i just am not ready to make a decision on this David? you know it from what i think i heard the property the pool barn has been used for so many things that almost anything you wanted to do there is grandfathered except to have a gas station and the inland wetlands people 
um, said that they really couldn't deny it, that it's not over the aquifer. They're doing what they uh, have been asked to do and more as far as protecting the environment from leakage. So I think it's something that everybody here is against, but I don't think we have a reason to use that as the reason to deny it. Um, I'm concerned about the PAD use. Um, I'm not so sure that residential in there makes sense, but I'm not the owner. Right. And I'm not risking my money. He is, and, and he should have property rights to be able to do that. Um, so I'm, I'm finding it hard to vote against it. Okay. Mike, comments or? Uh, I'm just as much on the fence as mine is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jerry? I'm not prepared to vote either. There's just too much information to consider. I, I do have to tell you, it's quite surprising because it was going to be a 24 hour gas station. I'm not sure if that's a good fit, especially for a residential area. Uh, so you may want to think about that. And I don't think enough information has been presented about the barn. I, I support the business development, but it seems like all we've been talking about is a gas station, gas station, gas station. I'd like to see some more tangibles on where this barn's going to go. You know, I don't want to see the barn fall beside after the gas station gets opened up. So there, there was a presentation two weeks ago about the design of the building, but but you're yeah, right. No, there's but I have, you in know, terms of it, tenants. It could, and, it could yeah, be right. it could be uh, residential upstairs, but may not right. be if we don't. Right. You know, so right. we really don't have any assurance of what it's going to be, or is it going to revert back right. to what it was, an empty barn with some landscaping around it. There is a lot of parking lot there, too. I do agree with somebody about the open space. I think we're really hmm. grabbing every single piece of, pro of inch of property there. Um, so I'd like to see maybe something done about that, but I have to look at the other facts, so I'm not prepared to vote. Kevin? Okay. Um, well, I served on design review at the time when we were reviewing the, uh, the pad proposal. And I don't think this is exactly what we had planned when we considered had proposals that, that referred to testimony that it was designed to be. You know, if you look at the intent, uh, purpose to establish for, um, you know, encourage mixed use for innovative development. We heard that. Um, encourage master plans to create attractive, livable, environmentally wholesome, and pedestrian friendly. I don't think it meets the desire of the had it's not a right to have a pad put in you know you don't have the right to switch over and i think the town should get something in, in back and for doing a, a change in the zoning and i don't think the proposal that we have does that um, that and we also you know the planning commission has already expressed that you know they don't see that either, um, that it meets the plan for a, the, the the intent and desire for pad otherwise you're doing spot zoning you just put it in a, in a place without extracting some value for the town. I'm not sure I understand the, the value for the town from the... Oh. What, what, what you, I, I don't quite understand what you're saying. I don't that, that think the trade-off to the town is worth making his own change. Okay. Ned? I haven't bought gas in town in over 10 years. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes I go up to the Cumberland Farms in Granby. Uh, so I'm not in, opposed to a moderately priced gas station in town. Okay. But I, I'm not sure. Another, another comment is that the um, open space is one amenity, but public restrooms off the trail at least to us older guys with bad prostates, um, <laughs> has a definite value um, for people traveling through. So, I, you know, it's, it's different from open space, um, but I think it's valuable. I agree with Kevin that the it doesn't look like what everybody thought a pad would look like when we were going through all those discussions. But there's also the statement that it had to be a creative Thing. And this certainly is creatively different from what we anticipated. So I think 
It's hard to decide. I mean, I, yeah. I'm sounding like I'm for it, but I, I really am more on the fence than, than not. Well, it sounds like we're not going to make a decision tonight, so that, that probably isn't satisfactory to the applicant or to those who oppose the application, but I think it's the right thing uh, to allow uh, this to, to sink in a little bit. Um, I'll give my comments of sort of where I am. I'm, I'm equally, uh, uh, you know, not firmly one way or the other. I think that uh, I have a great deal of respect for what Mr. Evans has done in town, especially across the street. I don't know if anybody remembers what the Wasabi restaurant looked like before uh, it got torn down, but it was, it's a huge improvement. And uh, so I think the effort to improve that property is, is uh, attractive. Um, it's hard to ignore the uh, magnitude and intensity of the uh, neighbor's response, and it's certainly been heard uh, by all of us. Um, but on its on it, I think ultimately the challenge for the zoning commission is to look at the property and see what's an appropriate use for it in the context of the town. Um, and some of the issues that are raised are uh, important, um, and some of them are uh, reasons to not do it if you're against it, or reasons to do it if you're for it, and not necessarily. Um, so you don't, all of those points don't necessarily weigh equally in, in a decision that we will ultimately have to make. Um, Mr. Evans has the, the right to develop the property. I think the, the question is, you know, can we make this happen in a way that makes everybody happy? No, we can't. Uh, but can we do it in a way that is right for the town of Simsbury? And that's the challenge that we as commissioners have. And I think. Um, uh, you know, we, we will individually think about this. We will not collectively think about that. We'll do that at our next meeting in uh, September. Uh, and to the extent that we have questions, can we do anything about that, Hiram? Uh, you ask me, direct to direct uh, them through, through if Hiram. If there's an engineer question, I'm happy to talk to you. Yeah. I have a question. If... Well, What would he have to do in that property to develop, redevelop the pool barn with his Cumberland Farms um, without using a PAD? He isn't in. Could you it, speak up just a little bit, please? I asked the question: What? If Mr. What's a permitted use that would only would it would require a zone change? To to put in a Cumberland Farms and, re, and to redo his pool barn for offices and retail if he couldn't do residential but could he do something without a PAD it would it still would be his own special change. Change. It would still be his own change his own change because it's industrial yeah right now it's industrial and so it, 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 you know that our gas station is industrial yeah they're, they're not allowed in our industrial zone so that's the thing they, so it, it has to be a business zone so does a machine uh, a manufacturing plant could go in there next it, it, correct or not? that's one of the things about i think the applicant referred to in the beginning of their presentation is that a number of things have taken place in that site over the years and so whether they would continue to maintain that those uses continue to reside there i think there was there was some discussion about manufacturing there was sales there was auto sale repair. there. There was actually auto repair there, that's right. The only thing is the pumps, uh, this whole process. I mean, they could repair, they could set up a garage there, they could do manufacturing there. And frankly, you know, some of those things could be great, they could be beautiful, or they could be a lot worse than, than uh, you know, like folks that live nearby might want to see them. Yeah, so, so, those, so, so if this was a tune-up, drive-through tune-up uh, uh -huh. lube shop, that would be allowed. That's currently been there before, and I think the argument would probably be made that it could be established there very quickly with a zoning permit. Right. Yeah. McDonald's. A little change. All right. Retail, though? Not retail would not be allowed. Retail is allowed. Yep, Cool Barn was retail. So some of the choices, huh? everything but a gas station, at least. It's Why would you have a gas station? It's a special permit. The gas station, gas station requires, requires a special permit. permit. Special That's permit. correct. How about the synagogue? It has to be allowed under the regulations. Yes. It's not, without a zone change, it's not allowed under the current regulations. As weird as that sounds, you know, it, it, that's the way it currently reads. 
But so there's I no place you, you could put a gas station. In I'm town. sorry. Dan? There's no place you could put a gas station in town. Not without special without, without going for, through this process. I think the applicant went through that that sort of scenario last time, where they ran down through it. Either whether it was because it was an aquifer, because of its proximity to a, a church or an educational institution or whatever. Uh, the current ones. But it met all of those. You wouldn't need to come to the zoning commission to be approved if it met all of those requirements. Is that, that correct? That's you'd still have to probably get a special permit. Right, because it's a gas station. Point. Okay. Uh, Hiram, a question about the text amendment. If we were to recommend a different approach to the text amendment we can do that as a commission to solve the issue or does the, this is like the second time that, that someone's brought us a text amendment to uh, I'm thinking back to the horse uh, thing a year ago mm -hmm. yeah and so the question is could we propose a text amendment for uh, our zoning regs that would address either just this property or the reg in, in total? I'd really have to be careful how I answer that, Mr. Chairman. I think that um, if, if it just had to do, the text amendment had to do with the distance from the religious institution, I think it would depend on how that's worded and whether that change was significantly different than what's been proposed or not. It, it could be slightly different and still accomplish the same thing, but if it's significantly different and had potential to impact. We'd need um, another public hearing. I, I would think so, yeah. I'd, I'd want to be careful and to see exactly what it was before, and then run that by town attorney be okay. before we did that. All right. So for example, his suggestion in his letter, would that be sufficiently variable or different? That's part of the application at this point, okay. So okay. that would be right on. Because it was on the record during right. the public hearing. And in terms of some of the operating things that you've uh, potentially suggested we could talk about uh, if we got to a decision point, uh, those are things that, that we as a commission could implement as conditions of the application. That's correct. We did that. yep. Modifications. Of Hours of, of operation, public address systems. Lighting, noise, so on, yes. Uh, ingress and egress. Restroom signs on the uh, restroom signs on the <laughs> on the, the, on the pathway. pathway. <laughs> for me, the big yeah. arrow for Dave. Yeah, for Dave. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, we will not take action tonight, and we will continue this application uh, for our next meeting. Um, and I, I can't emphasize enough how much we appreciate everyone's participation. Uh, this is what democracy is all about. Doesn't make it any easier on us, but it's uh, that's what it's all about. So there's no no meeting scheduled in the beginning of September at the present time, Mr. Chairman. However, if the commission decided to have a special meeting, we'd notice it and make sure that everyone knew about that as well. So, and we do not have to have it on a Monday night. So if we wanted to have a meeting on you, a Thursday night, we yeah, could do that. Yeah. That's correct. Cool. We just have to Chair, properly notice it. Did we approve the minutes at the last two meetings earlier in the meeting? Or yes, did we did. Both of them? Both? I thought we only oh. did one. Oh. That's all right. We can do that. I pretend. I'll pretend. I just don't remember it, but then. No, we talked about it. That's a long time for me. Specifically, specifically we did the, the most recent yeah, meeting. July 7th. The July 7th meeting. There was a June in the package. I just thought maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure why that was the, in there. The re they were in, well, there was a June 24th meeting uh, minutes in there. Those were planning minutes, I believe. No, there were, there were zoning meeting, meaning, uh, I don't believe the minutes were ready for the March 16th meeting. 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 16th. Okay. There's also the July 7th. Uh, yeah, we approved July we 7th. We approved July 7th. Anybody have any comments on the June 16th meeting? I, I recommend that we approve those. Yeah, we, already, we approved them last time. That's yeah, I that thought so. Yeah. Did we? We're good. We're good. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hiram, what else do we need to do tonight? Uh, two quick things, Mr. Chairman. Just under informational items, the last meeting, the commission approved the uh, form based code for the Hartford property, and there were two, two changes, two revisions to that that I just wanted to make sure that everyone was clear on. Section 7.0C1, and the wording was this, the Hartford North District shall consist of at least, in the way the text read that at that time, one um, of the following four distinct components. 
and the change there was that the commission wanted to require at least two uses. So that, that change was made and is clear in the, in the new reg. I have also confirmed this with a consultant with Gateway. And what this means is that any proposal uh, which does not meet the standard uh, automatically becomes a type four application. So therefore, we'll go to public hearing. I think as was suggested by, mm -hmm. by Mr. Ryan. So the other part to that was, the second revision was this. Under section 5.0 D4, this is adding a section D to that regulation, to require public hearing on any application to ensure its compatibility with stated and adopted code standards. So that would require, allow you to take to public hearing any of those applications that you wanted to, even a type one if you wanted to, although that's gonna be a minimal change. So that was the wording that I recommended for that one. Um, I believe this embodies what the commission meant when it ad uh, adopted that particular revision. So those were the two changes that, that I uh, yeah. want to make sure that everyone's clear on, that you can take the uh, any, any application you want to to a public hearing, make sure that it meets the set standards, and then the other one was to require at least two of the four distinct component zones. So I'll, I'll just say that Hiram ran this by me. I think that this language about the public hearings is stronger than what we originally talked about. We talked about permitting public hearings as opposed to requiring. But I think that uh, it's not bad to start with that language. Uh, I think we should be aware that the Hartford is probably not happy with that because it sure. basically puts almost every application into the process that we you know, spent two or three hours on tonight. So uh, I, I can tell you that I, I coming through, did have a meeting with them late last week and I think the chairman's portrayal is correct, not that that has to impact the commission's no. decision at all, but um, that's that was the wording that I thought would work well for everyone. The other thing that we need to do this evening is that uh, we need to set the effective date for this regulation, which we didn't do last time. And I would recommend that we set the effective date as of August 1st, 2014. So we'll notice that and make sure that, that becomes the effective date. So if, that's so if they come in with an all residential offer before that, we're uh, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> we're screwed. No. <laughs> no, Actually, with, with that amendment, even though we said two, <laughs> does it need to be a percentage thing? I know on the on the south parcel it says you know like a fifty percent or something. So I mean, the, it's at least two of those, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it, does it? You know, but two means ninety-nine percent residential. So they just add one gas station, and then they're good to go. They're good to go. That's what I'm questioning. You know, whether there has to be a. <laughs> I, you know, I, that's a good question, but I think that what happens is that um, we would take a look at that and compare that with the with the uh, with the plans that were set out. Those those graphic representations that were set out. If it's materially and if something different, something is yeah. far off from those things. You're going to see it, and it's going to go to hearing. No questions. I mean, yeah, there's a way to catch it. It's going to right. There, there's a lot. I mean, I think that the public needs to understand. You know, the form-based code is is great for the developer because they can say, okay, this is what we need to do. On the other hand, there's a tremendous amount of, of sort of constraints built into that, and with regard to the form and what it looks like. And so that's that's the give and take mm -hmm. there, and that's what. Yeah. It's not always easy to get a new sign or whatever you need to do, but it, it, the idea is to try to put some predictability in the regulation, too. So, All so right. if, that's, if that's okay with the commission, I, yeah, that, we're gonna, those things would be most appreciated. Let's go with that language. And, yeah. and move to accept the language and make it effective August 1st. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Last thing. And this is just an informational item, is that someone, uh, one of the business people in the center of town recently brought in uh, their uh, topic which comes up, oh, I don't know, every week, uh, about uh, parking, and, uh, pool parking and shared parking in the center of town and what an issue that is. And they brought a whole series of pictures about how people have, you know, my tenants parking only signs all over the place. This is gonna be a fairly big issue and a fairly complicated issue. What I'll do in the next month in August is put together a little bit of a study about this and bring it to you in September. I think we need to have all the business people sit down and talk about this and how we're going to work with this in the future, how we're going to deal with it. Is this really about restaurants mostly? Um, restaurants, but also office buildings. You know, for example, the former Simsbury Bank building in the corner. Oh, there, yeah. you know, oh, things yeah. like that. We had a Simsbury Center zone or whatever you might call it parking thing. And every developer that came in would 
not have enough parking on his property. So he would show you the guys next door and the guy next door and say we're all sharing the property. And then the property changes hands and the new guy says, I'm over. not sharing it anymore, yeah. you know. Yeah. Exactly. And he can't. Exactly right. Yeah. And, that, and that's what we and I parked there and I defy them to give me a ticket because I want to take them to court. Yeah. But they won't. You're that kind of guy now. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy Gallagher knows. Hmm? Gallagher knows. All right. So this yeah, is uh, this is coming up September. When? September, September, October. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I promised them that I would bring that to the commission's attention, but just that we'll give it some serious attention in the meantime, because it is an issue the downtown merchants are concerned with. It may take some research to back it's a lot of these oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. applications that we had over the years in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, just some questions real quick. Um, big why? Yes. Don't know. Uh, I do, I actually, the meeting we had with them about a week ago indicates that everything is still uh, on track. Uh, we expect the closing to take place in August. They expect to start doing groundwork in September. They'll be open a year from that. Okay. Cure Leaf, are they up and opening? Cure Leaf? The fence is up. The security is in place. The zoning certificate has been signed off on. Uh, and as far as we know, they're ready to begin operation. Nobody came to those public hearings. No <laughs> <laughs> came to the dope smoking one. But. No. They had more people for That's horses, horses, horses and gas stations. And gas stations. Gas stations. Yeah. 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 Afterwards. That was my thought. I was thinking, yeah. All right. Turn the pool barn into another cure relief. Second. Nobody can say a word. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, 